Agenda, any additions or corrections? Uh, the building permits approved. The garage should, does sound. Um, I just noticed Kyle, he doesn't sign off on those. He did, he has. He turned it in after I had the packet ready. Okay. Right. But yes, it has been approved. Okay. okay. He took it down today, the old one. Did he? Yep. Yeah. Motion to approve the consent agenda. So moved. Second. All seven. Roll call. Muller. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Waltman. Yep. Priest. Yes. Okay, ordinance 496. This is a uh, an ordinance in regards to our urban renewal plan amendment. This actually would have been considered at the previous meeting. We didn't have it in time to be included with the uh, with the packet last time. But we do need, since we added property to that urban renewal area. We need to uh, amend our urban renewal ordinance to show those properties, in, and that's what this is doing. And it is, uh, it is ready for action. So move. Second. Second. Roll call. Bowman. Yep. Bowman. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Please. Yes. Can we, can we consider all three readings? Do we have that motion? We'll make that motion. Second. Second. We'll call. Holden. Yes. Reese. Yes. Muller. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. One more time to finally approve the readings. I'll make that motion. Second. 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 We'll call. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Holden. Yes. Reese. Yes. Muller. Yes. Okay, resolution 1853 is Camp Crescent. A little discussion on that would help. Yeah, you know, I don't know how everybody feels, but I think this project needs to be put on the back burner. I, it's just gone sky high. We went from 50,000 to 150, and now we're at 189 or 84 or something, and I'm sure we're going to end up over 200, and I just don't think you take back that kind of revenue that fast, especially with everything else we've got going on this year. Especially with everything else that hasn't come in on what we thought it would talk. So that's just my opinion. I would tell you we paid what fifteen thousand in engineering fees so far. far I suppose. Yeah, I know. I realize that. So what happens in that if we were to put this on the back burner, which is fifteen thousand? Dollars with this engineering that we've got, could we use that? Why don't we, if we want to? Or not? The we plan, the plans would be ready to be rebid right mm -hmm. away, so, so everything would still be there. So it would be excellent. So if we had to put it on hold for a year, we could use the same plans that we have. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. what we did? That, that's that's what an engineer's fees. It's not totally wasted, but it's just that you know I just don't I don't I don't understand <clears throat> why. We get a bid, or, or we don't get a bid, I would say. We get an estimate of the cost, and we're told it's 50000 and that we'll probably get a grant, and then we don't get any grant, and we're almost 200000 I mean... My, uh, my, uh, those are my estimates to start with, and it was, we figured 50 in, in city funding and 50 in a grant for $100,000. Which was 100000 you figured. Yeah, so that was... Now it's two hundred. Yeah, it's only ninety. Well, I know, but I mean, but, you know, I, I do want to, I guess, have that discussion about about this uh, uh, SRF fund, where we had anticipated that we were going to use SRF funding for the green infrastructure portions, and you know, that's we anticipated that based on conversations with the with the uh, uh, urban uh, people from the from the DNR who had been here to look at our projects. And said, "Yep, they look like pretty good projects." Um, we looked at this project in in specifically 
to uh, as a WQI grant project, which like we did the Dixieland uh, with WQI. And they said, no, it might not be a, a good project for WQI, but this would be more likely a good project for SRF. So, I mean, that's why we kind of steered, steered things that way. And they apparently and it, weren't the ones that make the decision. No. It, there are some criteria that have to be met, and, and this didn't meet a couple of them on slope or uh, depth to yeah. be able to install a rain garden. So, and, and what we could do is look at when we do our budget and put a little bit more into Kitty and do that for next year. Um, since we already have 50 grand in Kitty, we just keep doing that. I guess, I don't know. I mean, I mean, uh, uh, how many years, has anybody figured out how many years it would take us to recoup this? That the increased revenue off the last one was, oh, I hate to even tell you a number, but it's 15 or $20,000 that so take 10 cycles years. through those those uh, concrete camping spaces. And, you know, it, you always have to improve that campground, make those spaces bigger, because the campers are getting bigger. Uh, yeah, bigger. I understand that. You know, um, you know we, again, we probably don't have to do it right now, um, but sooner or later we're going to have to do it. Those, those camp spots down there are like sardines. And as campers are getting bigger and bigger and more people are going to the fifth wheel camper, mm -hmm. which are bigger than the pop-ups and stuff, mm -hmm. we're going to have to accommodate them, otherwise we're going to lose campers. Right, and I do you understand know. that. I just think the cost to yeah. them. Right. Yeah, I, I guess there, I would pitch a couple things to you. That uh, since the green infrastructure portion to the east of the road doesn't qualify for funding, it also is it's not needed for the project, and we can take a look at just cutting that out. And that was a little over fifteen thousand dollars on Austin's estimates. And then the other uh, part then just becomes how you finance that. And that I would really uh, like to pitch the idea about again an inner fund loan where it's actually paid back, and you pay back over the course of two or three years um, to the electric improvement fund. But we also might need some. You know, I realize that we have money, we're not broke, but we also, I, I would like to see that East End project, you know, and, and I don't, you know, we don't know yet what our, what we might want to partner with out there. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's going to bring us a lot bigger return. Sure. This year, anyway. I mean, not a return this year, but I, that project needs to happen. It needs to come together. Well, this was going to fix our sewer problems, wasn't it, Bill? We've been jetting it after every big weekend, which has made a tremendous, we haven't had any plugs. Right. It doesn't fix that dump station that we've been going to fix for the last 12 years that I know of. Eventually, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Couldn't we do that anyway? Or when did you get done, I suppose? I mean, if you're going to put this project off, there's no reason to do that. Oh, okay. Because, like I said, we, after every big, when the campground's full, we go down and jet it that right. Monday. Mm -hmm. And we haven't had any plugs since. Yeah. And we've blocked out these sites already in the website so people can't rent them. Or they haven't been rented. So right. Right. We'd have to try to put them back online and see if we can rent them. Just saying. <clears throat> well, I, I think we should have taken a look at it at budget time myself. I mean, the engineering cost right now, as long as we know that we've got the plan in place. Uh, if we have to make a decision, we'll see what what's going mm -hmm. on further. Because it isn't like the campground's losing money. No, it's no, filled. It's filled. Those, those spaces will still be rented next year, but right. we got to keep improving the campground. I, I agree with that. I just think know, that maybe now is not the time when we have so much other stuff right. going on. And, and I'd be. In agreement so, with that, definitely. Well, I'll tell you, we can take a look at it too. We'll be freeing up some money. What's coming due? There's a couple payments that we're going to be eliminating pretty soon, or not. I'm trying to think on that. <clears throat> what do we got left out of folders? Do we have anything left? Yeah, that's like 20, 22 and 23. Okay. Those right. are done. So that's coming up here pretty quick too. Okay. I will, 
like I said, I'm not saying we have to wait that long, but it's just, you know, we've got a lot of things in the hopper right now, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. What do you think about those bids, though, Austin? They were kind of high, I thought. Um, I think he was kind of the, the low bidder. I think he was kind of scared of that swale, is what it looks like to me. Um, that's where he put a lot of that, a lot of his higher numbers, I guess. Which, Absolutely. if we would eliminate that swale area to the east there, like Scott said, it would be about 15,000 less. Um, other than that, fairly in line with the estimate, uh, or a little higher on the concrete pads. Not sure why there. Um, other than that, swale area was fairly in line numbers wise. I will say, uh, one of the people I talked to, and I was surprised we only had two bids on this. Uh, there was quite a bit of interest. Um, one of the people I talked to was concerned about the tight time frame, so that might have also contributed. And, and driven up the cost a little bit. Um, I think I think our completion date was March. No, it was May. like May. May. May fifteenth. May. But, yeah. Just the tight, tight timeline. Um, one of them was a little concerned about fighting water. We are so close to the lake. Might be kind of wet. Um, we are relatively shallow with that storm sewer, but. He still might be fighting water the time he gets down there to bed and everything. So. I guess I'd like to make a motion that we put it on hold and visit it at the budget time. Would that be a motion to reject the bill? Yeah, so the motion would be and to re reject Motion reject to reject the bill. second? I'll second. We'll call. Voter. Yes. Tom's? Yes. Bolton? Yes. Reese? Yes. Thank you. Yes. Hey, you got a question? Yeah, while you're talking about that project, I know you denied it, but when you go into the future, what's the purpose of the swale? What is the purpose of it? That if That's what you're talking about in front of my place along that whole road there, right? Correct? It's supposed to catch all the water and filter out it mm -hmm. and then drain into the lake. Okay, but catching nitrates, phosphorus, all that stuff. So water from where? Runs off the hill, runs through the campground. Whatever okay. water goes through there, they're going to grade it so some of the water went that way. So you're going to raise up the center part of the campground to come that way too, then? I'm not sure that. Basically, that area. Because, that well, the only reason I'm asking is that day we had that four and a half, five inches of rain, and Scott knows what day I'm talking about. There was no water sitting over there in that swale, so it was all run away the way it is. So I'm just questioning why. If the, I think the camp, I think the city needs to make improvements to the campground at some point in time. Definitely agree. I just don't see the reason in spending fifteen to fifty thousand on a swale that serves no purpose. That's my only opinion. We're going to do the swale if we have the SRF money. Mm -hmm. So is that SRF money? I read in the paper, so I want to make sure I understand it straight. One per, one council member told me it's a grant we don't have to pay back. What? So I read in the paper it's a low interest loan that we pay back over time. What? What? Which way is it? We don't pay it back. So that paper was wrong. Know, it's, it's kind of both. But uh, what we How, do, it can't be know, kind of both. It's either we pay it back or we don't sure, pay it back. Here's, here's the explanation. That that we we would issue debt for the sewer project, 100% of the debt for the sewer project. Okay, We can then issue another 10% of the debt that goes to sponsored projects. So we issue 110% of the debt. Okay. The interest rate on the entire 110% is reduced so that the total principal and interest over the course of the debt issuance is the same. So you're still paying back that 15000 just at a lower interest rate? Lower interest rate, yeah. Lower interest rate on the whole project? On the whole project, yeah. So you can't get the lower interest rate on the whole project unless you got that SRF grant for the green space? True. Okay. That, that makes it clear because the paper kind of made it look a different way. So yeah, that's... it's uh, kind of a complex yep. type financial arrangement. Yeah, but uh, yeah. Austin, thank you. I guess we're on hold. All right. Dale, I've got a question on those trees. Are those trees? 
the trees we were talking about, removing the or Did you mention something that they could be a hazard, you know, as far as? I, well, I've said it for years, they're a hazard. There's branches that fall down. All, some of them are dead up in there. Yeah. And, but I mean, and, and Scott's, aware, Scott's aware that they're dead because our neighbor went and asked Scott about trimming the dead branches out of there. Mm -hmm. um, they haven't got that done yet. But yeah, the, if you look, and then there was a camper that was sitting in there, I don't know, two, three, four years ago, I, I lose track of time, but thank goodness nobody was in the camper because it fell and went through, the branch went through the camper. Mm -hmm. but there's been a couple other branches that, that trees are just, they're old cottonwood trees. Yeah, are those cool. something we should be looking at getting rid of anyway, you know, even if we don't do the project? I, th I think the city staff certainly ought to. We would, those would be Control. trees that we would contract out. I mean, those yeah, are but I mean, the trees. before I guess before my only thought, right. before they fall and hurt before they fall, or, um, yeah, sure. yeah. my only thought was, you know, at what point do we need to get that done? Is it imperative right now, or do we need to do it before spring? Or I don't. I guess I just wanted to. What the ground freezes? Say if we want to do it mm -hmm. when it's frozen, it's the best time. Best time. Yeah. Yeah. And the campground's empty during the winter time when it's frozen, so you don't. Hazard of the people in there because they're right. both going to fall towards the campground. Yeah. yeah. So we could get a bid for that maybe, or okay. that's something that should be you know, nothing more. Dangerous. I just think that that piece should be. <laughs> well, you guys can go look at them and you'll see what yeah, I'm talking I said, about. I did, well, I think, yeah. We've looked at it for years. <laughs> well, you've been. You've seen. I've seen. Them. Them. Yeah. 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 We'll get some bids. We'll it, 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 that's that's entirely up to you guys. I'm just asking about that other stuff and just. But if we know there's a hazard and somebody does get hurt, then right, then we, we're in trouble. Yeah. We didn't right. do anything. So. so I have a question though about the swale. So if you don't put the swale in, are more nitrates and phosphorus getting into the lake just mm -hmm. from normal? Or no? No, because that's where it goes now. So we, we wouldn't be adding any addition. No, I'm saying. If, if we did the swell, we reduce the amount going into the lake? It works to catch it and, yeah, reduce the amount that goes in, yep. How much of a reduction can you expect from putting a swell in there? Like, I'd have to get an Iowa State group up here. To <laughs> you know, I'm just curious, yeah, you know, I know we do quite a, yeah. quite a few different swells. Sure, you know, and so the concept of any of those is, yeah. is to uh, get the water into the ground. Right. You know, so as opposed to having it flow directly into the lake, the water goes into the ground. Mm -hmm. And then you have all of the natural filtration work. And grass does too, filters it. So, yeah, it helps out some. So, yeah, that was going to be the idea here is that it has really some water tolerant uh, plantings and it would hold two or three inches of water, but that would be about it. And then over the course of a day, say it's supposed to drain, drain dry. Well, I was just wondering if there's something we can do, you know, to improve the water going into the lake without spending a huge amount of money. If there's just some local plantings we could do or something. Um, you, you can, I'm sure, do stuff to make improvements. How, how much of an improvement, I guess I couldn't tell you. Ben might have a formula for putting some shrubs or something for the slows of nitrates or phosphorus. I don't know. I think most of that water actually runs the other way, Vicki. It doesn't run to the lake. It runs up north. I, I'm going to call it north towards the museum where that drains it underneath the road. There's that place in the mm -hmm. campground where it goes underneath the road towards the museum and then it goes to the north of that road. Most of that water is running that direction. It ain't running towards the lake now. We don't end up to Larry, I believe, do we? Yeah. So From about the north. <laughs> At least you're right. third of the campground, that's true. Yep. Okay, we'll okay. move on to 1854 for our contract performance for the maintenance building. That was that's about the only good thing about that bid was the tree removal was cheap. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it'd be interesting to see who they were going to have to do it. There's one thing in the winter, it's usually a little cheaper because they, you know, they don't have a lot of work lined up, so that's, uh, you know. Okay. Is that on the contract performance? Just that uh, the bonds are, are in place, everything is uh, is ready for this. The uh, 
Um, and this would approve the contract and the bond. So yeah, everything's in order. We have a motion to approve that. So moved. Second. I'll second it. We'll call. Walter. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Walter. Yes. Yeah. Please. Yes. Okay, 1855. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Austin. Hey, so do you contact the uh, contractors yeah. or? I can. Yep. Yeah. I'm sure I'll call George too. But okay. Yeah, I'll give him a call tomorrow. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, 1855. So on uh, this. Next resolution would reclassify Cameron to become a lineman first class. See what that are. We have a, a uh, definition of this, and that you become a lineman first class when you provide documentation to the city of Lakeview Electric Superintendent that the employee has completed 6,000 hours of relevant on-the-job training and has participated in at least 576 hours of related instruction. So. Kind of the, the two-pronged test on that. First of all, the uh, instruction, Cameron's completed all of his journeyman uh, coursework. So uh, throughout the four years, you know, all that all of that stuff is done and all the exams have been addressed. Okay, And then it's uh, the on-the-job training issue, about uh, uh, 6,000 hours. And as Cameron and I went through, through hours for him, you know, we came up with, about uh, 8,100 hours, 8, hours, and uh, that would include his time that he'd been working for us here, the time he worked for the city of Gowrie, and then he'd also worked for us for three summers plus another extended time. So also total was eight more years. there. So, so, the so the time with Gowrie counts towards, towards included that towards those hours. Okay. Yeah. You know. Just uh, he needed to have six thousand hours, and this would have him at eighty-one hundred hours, including gallery and summer time hours. So you know, I I do recommend you know we'd reclassify him. I know Cameron wants to have some discussion about uh, when that reclassification should occur. Before before we vote, you mean yeah. he wants to make a comment? Yeah, I, I'm sure he would like some input. How come, how come when you got to 6,000 hours you didn't tell us? I didn't know that was my responsibility. I never got told. Them. We don't keep track of gallery hours. I know. We wouldn't do that. <laughs> um, I guess I didn't know those. I mean, obviously, a gallery is a different story, six months worth of hours, but uh, I guess I should have had some warning. I knew I had pretty close to that here, just working here between my three summers, full year, and then. Another almost 3,500 hours. Um, so you didn't think to ask how many hours you needed to make I've, that I've gotten these sheets before. I've asked for them, which they don't come from Scott. These come from um, IAMU, who I'm doing my apprenticeship through. Just recently, till a couple weeks ago, I was talking to Jeff when we were out working. And what had happened to him previously with this raise, he told me to ask about it, and that's when I thought about asking for it. And by then, just last week, Scott, that's when we came up with these numbers. Well, you're a valued employee, I would tell you that. Yeah. You're very good. We appreciate that. So, I mean, just what Jeff went through, I didn't want to go through the same thing. I knew I needed to bring it up right away so my raise didn't get pushed off because I knew if I didn't ask, we still wouldn't have That's nothing true. about it. I mean, I, Stephen Scott admitted the other day that it was a shared responsibility. Um, so, I mean, even if I don't get the full 2,160 yards, I'd still like something. This is just my feeling on it. I should have kept track of it. And, you know, when I started, I didn't even know about the first class thing because before, obviously, I wasn't a full-time employee. I never seen the <coughs> the union handbook on the raises. So, so how many hours were at Gary again? Uh, six months, uh, right out, uh, right on the dot. Six months, and what we figured out was there's 2,080 working hours in a year, so I think we put a thousand hours down yeah. for Gary. Yeah. 
before we go any further, Cameron, I'd like to have a, a motion from the council to upgrade you as a motion, then we'll talk about any back pay. Would that be fair? Yep. All right, so motion. Uh, Does man. Somebody got it. We'll call. Okay. Yes. Peace. Yes. Well, yes. Thank you. Yes. Done. Yes. You're official. You're a good lineman now. <laughs> okay, now. Still not at the top, though. Okay. Well, <laughs> we're supposed to keep working on that. Anyway, continue on. I didn't mean to interrupt you. I want to get this. No, that's fine. I mean, that's. I mean, I don't know what questions you guys got so, for me about it. I mean, so what. When somebody is getting their upgrade, so to speak, and, you know, I'm sure this has happened before. Really, only to Jeff would have been the other one. Okay, yeah. and what, what did we do with Jeff then? After, after a while, did, he and he, I just don't even recall the whole so situation. It wasn't well. until he got his journeyman that but he, he uh, So, who's, did we give him back wages? No. Well, no, because he only had two days to file agreements, and the two days were up by the time he realized it. Oh, and I got seven days now, which I'm not saying I'm going to. I don't. I'm not threatening with that at all. <laughs> yeah. but, but so we're made. We're aware when they're taking their their testing and everything. We're sure. aware. Mm -hmm. that. And that's so. That's kind of the two prong test. You know, we certainly see. And that's don't have we, any issue on the. That's on where we the, came up with uh, this oh, article. Right. That's so. where we came up with the shared stuff. I mean, like I said, I request these from the lady that does all my hours. I got three or four pages of these hours now, and. So until I brought up about the raise, that's the first I had thought of it when Jeff told me about what happened to him. He didn't want to see it happen to me. Now some of these hours are back when you worked for us for the summertime. Yep. Right? So you weren't even an electrician then, right? I worked closely with them pretty much. Right. I mean, I worked inside what we call minimum approach distance, right beside them. So. I just don't quite understand how this happens. I don't understand how you don't know how many hours you need to make um, journeyman? Is that lineman first class? Lineman and first class. And we don't know how many hours? I, I, I just don't understand that. Why don't we have a... It sounds like... It, why isn't it being between tracked? Between the employee the and us, we need to keep kind of track of that. Yeah, again, just understanding, I guess, the concept of, employ of lineman first class is, is a Lakeview thing. You know, it's not an industry thing. It's a Lakeview thing. I see. And, you know, the story behind that is that when we, when we hired uh, uh, Brian Sorensen way back in the day, and Brian had some substantial experience in order to be able to hire him at a wage a little higher than the, than the lineman wage, we created this. We created this position. Yeah. And then it's only ever come to be then with Jeff, and then with him. RACs actually use that title too. I'm in first class. So Bill, you weren't aware of any of it? Or? I don't keep track of hours. As soon as Cameron brought it up, I had to go talk to Scott. You know, it, I would tell you the whole thing, yeah, that came up last week. Yeah, like I said, the shared responsibility thing. I mean, I would have came up a lot sooner if I would have known that I would have had to come up a lot sooner and kept a lot better track of it. But I was never told, and I started, you know, keep track of the gallery hours, the summer hours. So, I didn't know. Because it is pretty loose about, I guess, what you might consider to be an hour. I mean, it's mm -hmm. not defined. But it's... Uh, and that's, I guess that's, as I was talking with Cameron, I said, yeah, I certainly would recommend we want to get you reclassified. But, uh, you know, as far as back pay, you know, I guess I'm not really in favor of it. It's um, because it, it also includes all the summer hours. That's a good portion of it. Well, I wonder if we couldn't have some kind of a compromise here, but I, I just think going forward, this doesn't sound like a good policy. <clears throat> no, there needs to be some. When a person starts school, start. taking the classes and that, you should know. Mm -hmm. You should know exactly yeah. what's required when you hit that mark. So and you should be some kind of oversight of it. I mean, maybe he needs to come to you or the employee needs to come to you, but there ought to be some kind of a... Record keeping. Yes. Right. See, so when we did the last union negotiation, I actually... Uh, the line in first class used to be... 
you know, attain the level of journeyman. I said that's not right. And I tried to get that classification removed because that's the same thing as becoming a journeyman, which is still two bucks an hour higher. So that's why I got changed. I think we took the journeyman out and just put it in its own class mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. So how many hours did how many you're talking how many hours are we talking total? Twenty twenty one sixty-two. And part of that is guard. Part of it's guard. Yeah. And then like I said during the summertime, I mean I wasn't technically a, a lineman, but I was beside Brian and Jeff every day doing secondary work, primary work, transformers right there in that distance with them. So about eleven hundred dollars instead of twenty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and the gray areas we're talking about the suburb now, basically is kind of what we're thinking. Sure. Yeah. Because sometimes you can be working with somebody and be mentoring, but not start to the educational, you know, the, mm. the requirements for. So you know, the, in the summertime when I first started, I didn't even plan on going into this line of work. I was exactly. like, oh, I got a degree in something completely different than this. Right. But as I worked beside him more and more, I mean, I got more into it and got closer to it and learned it. And right. And we're glad you did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're def what? definitely glad that you're here and that you've taken the initiative to, you know, improve so your since, education. Yeah. How many hours do you think it would, just to guess, since you've come back from Gallery, how many hours would that be? 3,462, but I don't think I have every single weekend on here and it's missing from 10, 13 to now. Which I just said in last Friday, and that's I probably didn't get this started till probably December of the year I started, late November of sixteen. So yeah, this has it and a half or two months after I started here. You also have probably thirty six hundred hours that are recorded, and it'd be mm -hmm. a few hundred hours more than that. That's the amount that's recorded towards the journey. Uh, towards my apprenticeship, what I have to have for basic and hot hours. Sure. And so. Say that again. And on the hours that they record for the journey or the apprenticeship program, you know, he's at 3,462, 3, and there's probably a little bit more. So figure 3,600 hours 4, there, and and that he didn't start recording these right away. But he probably has 4,000 hours since he became. Uh, I've been here just family. over two years now, <clears throat> two years and two months, so 2,080 hours in a year. I mean, 20 for 40. 4,100, almost 4,200, I'd say. So, I'll play a little bit of devil's advocate here. Your plans are to stay at Lake View? Recently, I've had a lot of thought about it. I have. I applied for a job in Maryland. I was out there on vacation. Um, I didn't get it. I don't think I would have wanted it anyways because I would have been traveling a lot. But get the journeyman wage and as we go forward I mean at the coming union negotiations in a couple of years see what the pay goes to and how I can advance myself here maybe someday so I guess I mean it's all so you're not really sure if you're not sure no stay in the area or not I'd like to stay here I mean this is my hometown I love working here yeah I just get to serve the people that I've grown up and known my whole life so So there's 576 hours of related instruction. That basically is the apprenticeship program. Okay. You know, that's anything the, I, anything you can think I, of that as the book work associated with yeah. it, and it's all done. I have everything up to, I mean, I got, like Scott mentioned earlier, all I have left is, I still got another 3,500 hours to put in. Once I get that, my journeyman's done. I have my, yeah, I even have my final test done on my testing for my journeyman. You just got to get three hours of it. Yep. Okay. Are we going to take the sewer test, water test? <laughs> yeah. Really put me on the spot here, John. <laughs> Just, Jeez. I have actually decided not to. Oh, okay. Like I said, no, I depends on my, it depends on what my future holds. I mean, I decided that two bucks an extra, two bucks an hour here, if I don't want to stay, I could go somewhere else and honestly make 40 some linemen somewhere else. And it's not worth it to be here for 28 worrying about water, sewers, streets, and electric. 
for 28 when I can go somewhere and just be alignment for 40, like I want to do. But like I said, it all depends on how it goes and here. So I mean, there's just a lot of factors still to be decided. So back to back to this, since we didn't have a policy and we need to have a policy now, um, so things like this don't happen again. Mm -hmm. And if it would have brought been brought to our attention, whether it be through Scott or for Cameron, he would have made that two dollars an hour sooner. more a little bit sooner. Right. So I feel we should probably some give kind him of a something. compromise. I so, do too. And the idea is what I guess. What? Yeah. You're saying it's twenty one hundred hours? Eleven hundred hours. Eleven hundred hours. Twenty one sixty two would be the actual number. You take a thousand maybe off for the gallery. So what if what if we went with a thousand hours? I'm comfortable I mean, just, with that. Uh, don't have to pay between what he got and what his journey would be. Going back a thousand hours. Two dollars an hour. Two thousand. How much is that? Two thousand. Two thousand. Two thousand. Oh, so would you, you be satisfied? Still. Honestly, I mean, it's right here in black and white. We agreed on the hours. To me, it should go back to the 6,000. We agreed on it, what I have now, and no matter when it was brought up, I, to me, honestly, I'm sure, you, I know you guys have a different feeling, but I work the hours I've put my time in. Simple as that to me. You just said it's a shared responsibility. Right? Yeah, it is. So, so what, yeah. half and half it? Would, would that be shared? If it's three thousand, it'll be fifteen hundred, right? Mm -hmm. If if say you're saying it's three thousand dollars, and uh, fifteen hundred would be a split, right? Shared responsibility. Oh yeah, it would be. Yeah, yeah. we yeah, we we had agreed on this number. It's eight thousand one sixty two, and and so out of that, you know, if it's it's two thousand one sixty two more than the six thousand. Um, Noting that that you know we agreed to those that includes that time at Yari and and at the uh, uh, those summer hours. So what do you, what do you say that what, what's your number then? What you're thinking? <laughs> Twenty one. Twenty one sixty two would be mine, but I mean even with the hours and Gower and the summer hours. Like I said to me, it's right here in black and white. But yeah, I understand that. But, you mm -hmm. know, it's just you know, looking at it as a council too. You know, mm -hmm. she we're brought you back after quitting, and right now you're telling us there's a possibility that you'll quit again. Brought me back after quitting. What from Gower? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know what I'm saying. We came back here. And we, we're, work, we're working with you. Hopefully, that we could in the future work. Keep you here, you know what I'm saying? That's what I'm trying to get at here. <laughs> so, are you on the clock the whole time when you're studying, or are you off the clock? On the clock. So, you got paid to study. Mm hmm. Which is in the union handbook. I'm sure. Get killed. I think our whole crew is a good at that. Now. We don't climb poles here, we do them right. 
I've climbed one time. <laughs> <laughs> one time I've climbed here, and I, I, don't, I enjoy it. I honestly do, but it's definitely not as safe. Well, somebody will have to find a number that we're comfortable with. I think we ought to, we ought to pay something, but I don't know what the dollar amount is. We'll leave that to the council. That say split it 50 50. Well, I mean, he's got his figures down. I, you know, if that's what the game was. You know, play and we need to... Well, if the agreement was, like you say... Right. That is that is the definition, but it then becomes, you know, what's what's an hour? Are you going to include all the summertime hours? It's an important decision. What was the pay at the summertime hours? I started at 10, but... In 2012. Do we know how many hours that was? You know, that, 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 doesn't, that doesn't matter though, because when you look at the 6,000, that was completed. But the, but the 6,000, I, I would think, I don't know, I would think would start when you start the <coughs> educational part of it. Which was... Well, by I, I mean, I get I, that's my question. I guess I'm not real clear on the union. What's in the union agreement without looking in? And, and yeah, um, I, I mean, the day I started is the day I started learning. Summertime. <laughs> don't touch this. Don't touch that. You know, <laughs> it's just described as hours of relevant on-the-job training. And you're saying you don't think the summer hours are relevant? Uh, I'm I'm saying uh, that I included them in that in that initial number. And that can help them to, to be classified as a as a, a uh, lineman first class, but should there be pay associated with that? I don't necessarily agree. But they are included well, in there, though. Well, yeah. They'll I put mean, them in you, there. If you say you need six thousand hours, and we agreed them on that they were in there. If this is shared responsibility, what part do you want to share? That's not my final decision to make. <laughs> when you I mean, like I said, I don't want to threaten you guys, but I mean, you're worried about me leaving. I just want to be appreciated here and know that I put in my hours and put 110% in every day that I come to work. I mean, if we pay anything back pay, it shows you that we care. Yeah, it does. You just know we're spending taxpayer money. Mm hmm Well, we would have paid either way if you would have paid me at the 6,000 hours or now. You know, once, when did you hit that 6,000 hours? 2,162 hours ago. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, when, you, when, you, when you came back and when you were full time, you hit that well, 2,000 hours. So just we over two hours an hour for the overage. It's basically it. Are you making a motion? I'll make that motion. Move a second. I'll second. I'll second. I'll second. What was the motion? Depending on 2162. Roll call. Okay. Okay, Wilton. Yes. Wilton. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Tom. Yes. Reese. Yes. We appreciate you, Ken. Thank you, guys. No, we it means a lot. For a long time. That made my decision a lot easier, <laughs> I'll tell you that right now. Talking about it doesn't hurt. That means a lot to me, guys. Trust me. Bill, you're all right. Well, you do. Hundred percent. Okay. That's. I wanted to ask you when we were done, not before. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to put you on the spot. No. no. <laughs> Cameron, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. All your thank you all of you guys. Thank you. Yeah. You do a good job. We want a good Thanks. crew, and we want people that give 110 yeah. percent. So keep yeah. it up. Oh, really 120. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, it's nice to have local people, right. you know, that mm, right. grew up right here. That's yeah. nice. It does make it a lot easier. Like when I lived in Gowrie, when I had to go talk to people about shutting their power up, the whole man, did they get mad. Yeah. <laughs> That's now we got old ladies yeah. that I go talk to. And, just well, give me 10 minutes and I'll bring some cookies out to you and I'm done. And they sure do. <laughs> mm -hmm.
wait for my cookies to get done baking, and we wait, and they bring them out to us. <laughs> they can't get them. Cookies? On the building side. Right. <laughs> okay, we have a number of four for Gunman Hicks. Yeah, this is Yes, $920,000. Right out of name. For a motion to pay Gunman Hicks. So moved. Second? I'll second. Roll call. Yes. 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 Tom. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Not every day I get to spend $920,000. Yeah, I mean, yeah. just that quick. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pay well, I can never <laughs> dream of that much money. It'll get worse. <laughs> well, we're uh, at the lagoon. Did you see the, uh, yes. the letter that was at the uh, at your chair tonight then? Mm -hmm. At the beginning of this project, we were talking about potentially making some changes to the uh, to the building to the control building and to the sampler building. And Grunman Hicks had initially gave us an estimate of some savings there of $62,000. That basically changes from a block building to a, uh, a step-built building with a pitch row. Um, the dropped. potential savings are no longer $62,000. They are looking at surprise, savings about $34,000. Well, that's good, though. Yeah, that's good, though. But is that a long-term solution? Wood or brick? No. Yeah. Well, and I it's, we do not get a recommendation from the uh, engineers to no. proceed. You no know way. Right. I don't understand Grunman Hicks. When they sat here that night, yep, yeah, we've gone through everything, we've gone through everything, we've gone through everything. Mm -hmm. And then they just assume something. I don't get it. You know what I assume? <laughs> <laughs> well, you just said right here, you just said it, it said, you guessed. Uh, yeah. 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 So, I mean, that, yeah, that's, I a, that's just a... Uh, Their best estimates. But, yeah. This yeah, but this is Grunman Hicks. This is the ones I think that, for well, once, I'm not blaming the engineer. No, okay. I'm blaming the contractor. <laughs> yeah, but it's still not enough money to make a difference. Yeah, I understand yeah, that. It just irritates me. Yeah. yeah, it's a 40 year plan, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Wood shade the last 40 years. No, there. stick with yeah. the original. Yeah, yeah. Not wood. <laughs> yeah, no. No, no but they fix that. Stick with the original. So you can put your electric lines up yet? Did they grade that? I talked to Dave, or not Dave, I talked to John Healy today, and he says the grading is substantially at grade. So he told me to go ahead and set the poles, so I called up Legacy and he's getting it rolling. Okay. Yeah. So he's, that's all he's got left, and that, and that job's totally done. Yeah. With Legacy? Right, the overhead that project. All right, have a schedule on under budget. You betcha, yep. We you know, better 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 right Yay for them! Yeah. <laughs> but he did a beautiful job. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. All right. So we don't need to do anything on that. Ah, uh, no. You know, I guess the response would be back that uh, we'd stick with the original plan mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Yep. That's what I think. Okay, we got to talk about the drainage tile to lagoon site. We got bids. Yeah. Just, uh, so we got bids in, in there relatively close, other than the one that says, uh, with not really a solid number, it's plus or minus 20%. <coughs> <laughs> you sure as that ain't gonna be minus, I'll tell you that. Yeah, I've never had a bid that's done that way before. Yeah. No. 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 That's no. just asking for like that. that. Worse than the bids we usually get. That's worse than an auctioneer, more or less acres. <laughs> yeah, it is. So what bid would the council like? I'd make a motion to go with King Construction. And I'll second that. Yeah. Roll call. Tony. Yeah. yeah. Solid. Uh, yes, I think that's over. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Reese. Yes. That's what I just said. Yes. Okay, you go through our annual financial report. Yeah, this is the annual report uh, effective on June 30th of this year. And we usually would have our have our auditors audit this before we bring it to you. But uh, they're act they have not been here. It needs to be filed by the first of December, so we need to need to get this attended to, and uh, that's the cover sheet that would would print in the paper next week. We need a motion on that. Yeah. Do we have a motion on the annual fiscal financial report? Yeah. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Yeah. Yes. Bolton. Yes. Thomas. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Okay, do we have a Scott report? Yeah, let's take a look at page 17 on a 
So we discussed budget process. Um, uh, this is the uh, process on page 17 that, that we've utilized in the past, and it, what it really does is relies a lot on uh, capital planning. You know, to where we would work on our capital improvements plan beforehand and kind of, because what you find out is that's where a lot of the discretionary spending the budget comes from is, is into capital projects. So um, I guess my question to you is, are you, are you content with, the, with this process? You want to try something different? Do you have any other different ideas? It's worked in the past. Somewhat. You know, and the real question is how, how involved does the council really want to be in, in delving deep, delving deep into the issues? You know, it's this uh, like Vicky and Tammy. They had went to this budget course last week, and mm -hmm. they, did they have any good insight for us about a good process or anything? I don't know what Tammy thinks. I, you know, I'm still trying to process a little bit of that stuff. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of information. There was a lot of information. <laughs> and, you know, they went really fast because most of the people there were administrative people or clerks or, you know, there was a few council people there. But, I mean, you know, so a lot of these people had done budgets before. There was one new gal in front of us, I think. She yeah, asked a she lot of questions. Good. But, um... And when the guy got up that gave the morning class and said, if, the, if you're new to this, you need to give yourself five years. Because he said, that's how it takes. And I'm like, oh my gosh. And all. So it was a little overwhelming, maybe, I guess, I think. But I want, I want to know as much about the budget and what goes into it and how we decide what we're going to do as possible. Does that help any? Well, this way is the best way, I think. We've done it this way, it works. That way the council's got all the input, which they should. Sure, absolutely. But he just asked how deep we want to delve into it, right? Mm -hmm. So what do you exactly mean by that, Scott? What would you, what are you envisioning? A lot of meetings. Ed. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> That's well, the words right out of his mouth. Yeah. Isn't it? <laughs> well, I think we'll so many projects. As many projects we got going on right now, it's going to be important to really take a look at any future mm -hmm. projects because, like I right. said, we're focusing downtown here now. You know, we've got the shed, we've got the, a number of different things going on, and I think we need to take a step back and take a look and see what our future plans are and mm -hmm. need to discuss the importance. I, I think we all came to the same conclusion here that Camp Crescent wasn't as high on the priority because of all these other projects and that's why we got a... Well, because the pay, the guesstimate went. Well, yeah, that's, <laughs> well, that's just... Well, right. but, 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 but you that's, can't keep adding and adding and adding right. to the priority list either. You've got to... Right. Right. Okay, let's move this one back a little while and concentrate 90, on what's already happening. Ninety thousand dollars is a hard pill to swallow. Well, when you didn't budget. it is for the community. I think when you know they see a lot of the spending and some of it, you know, maybe some of them understand, some maybe you don't. I don't know. Um, but I think you know you have a responsibility to be fiscally responsible to the community, and the downtown thing has taken off so fast, you know. Um, faster than I kind of thought it would and, and we got the East End project that I get asked about all the time. Is that going to come to be? When is that going to happen? I get asked in town and I get asked out of town. So there's a huge interest in that over there and you know that's kind of a unknown to a little bit right now. So I guess the things we have coming up for the next year, I, I think Whitey's right. We need to really figure out what our priorities are and how we want to move forward. What is our commitment on the east side there? That is, except for uh, streets and our water and sewer and... Our, our commitment is, you know, basically, will be water, electric, and the green infrastructure stuff up. Right. You know, big picture, those are our commitments. But that's, that's a hefty commitment. 
Anyhow. So let's just keep this as as we are. As we are. Yeah. Now my uh, other uh, specific question is: Would deal with the city council goal setting session? We've done a goal setting session annually for the past several years. Which and is would, a good thing. And would you like to do that again? And if we want to do that again, when is a good time? And if we would choose to do that in December yet, would our snowbirds still be around? I would like I would like the whole thing, you know, as soon as possible, but you know, I'm not the only one, so it's kind of up to everybody else. I don't think December is very good month. Well there's just so much going, going on, on in December, but I'd right. like to see it be able to do it in December a lot of it, but it's there's so much night. going on with the holidays and it's stuff. Just one I, night. I know, it's only one night and, and you know, then we've got all this budget stuff coming in January and, mm -hmm. and all these budget requests from these boards, you know, I, I wish we could have them a little earlier. I wish we could have the, the meetings with the department heads earlier, but, and, the, and I'm not saying that just because I want to leave because I can be on Zoom and still hear all and get all of it, but I just... I would like to not have to rush through any of it. I'd like to be able to give it consideration and thought. And when it all comes in January, bang, 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 it just seems like it was pretty fast. I mm, okay. So that's my opinion. I mean, I would guess that most of the department heads have some idea already of what they want. It's a... Uh... Yeah, and they they do have all of the inventory forms and everything there. They're working on those, and then they are anticipated to be at that December seventeenth meeting. Okay. Well, the January seventh has uh, reviews of the draft capital improvements plan. If we have that, we'll have a better understanding of where we're at to do goal setting. That has been how it's worked in the past that about the second week of January we would do the school set. But uh, I guess who's gonna what when are you guys leaving? You'll be you'll be gone for January, February? And Tammy is uh, just February. Just February. Mm -hmm. Only right. oh, one week in February is all that. Okay. You say December seventh? Jan January seventh. January seventh. Okay, there you go. So When's our council meeting? Yeah, first, there's the 7th and the 21st. You make it like the 14th, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So why do you have like the, the capital improvements and the goal setting before you hear your budget request? Because the, uh, I guess the largest amount of the budget request comes from department heads. <laughs> I hate to tweak with the department it was too much. It just gave them that stuff with an expectation right. to have it back to me by like the by middle of December. Okay. Okay. Just go with that. Run with it until. Um, couple, just a couple things. Um, look at the second week in December, as far as December tenth. Uh, we would look to have that uh, joint uh, city council fire trustees meeting that day, second Monday. We're hoping to do that on December 10th. Um, December 10th? December 10th, yeah. And then it's just a question of when you'd like to schedule a goal setting session. Or 
setting it had comfortable with the week of January 14th. Yeah. Well, that's with the council meeting that you just gave. No, that's between council meetings. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need to have meeting every, every week in January. So we have had it in the past. Definitely. Yeah. <laughs> and we're about ready to yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're just in time. Right. Keep your coat on. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're going to do January 14th, that Monday, that's a Monday. Yeah, it's called Monday. Why don't you put on a tentative schedule so that's yeah. 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 No, those Mondays in January, they all fill up. So. Okay. Uh, in regards to health insurance, see that our renewal on health insurance is proposed to renew around a 19% increase. Mm -hmm. so, what, what was agreed on to put that in the union agreement? It was over. You know, over the next, over this year and the next year, that if it went up more than 12 percent, 6 percent each year. Strike one. So, um, we're quoting different policies, you know, and in order to do that, everybody's got to fill out new applications and stuff, so we're meeting tomorrow to get the application process going and at least, at least know what's out there in the health insurance world. Come up, try to come up with some different options. Well, from what I understand, there's not a whole. I not thought many. But. You know, we didn't really discuss that too much because it didn't go up last year. I mean, we discussed it, but it didn't go up, so it wasn't an issue. Mm -hmm. But the health care package that that we have here is one of the best I've ever seen. I mean, I've never seen one like that. And I worked for the government. It's pretty good. You know, as yep. far as their co-pays, their their, um, you know, their rates, the, the spout, you know, the families. Um, I, I just thought it was extremely gentle. And that is, you know, that's one of those union issues as far as being bargained. Mm -hmm. They would argue different. We really like it, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure you do. Sure you do. Yeah. Well, let's wait and see what happens after. Yeah, and it's, yeah, it's really just the next step. We'll take applications and see if there's any other alternatives out there. Uh, now, we do have some good news that. Uh, yes. Are you meeting the or what? No. We have, we have been invited to submit a full application for the Catalyst Grant for the MORE project. So our pre-application is great there. That's a good start. It's the first time I've heard that. That's good news. That is good news. Yes. <laughs> That's some good news. <laughs> That's an inside joke style. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I must have missed the bear, The bear yeah. spilled the bean. Oh, yeah. 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 I took your thunder. Jeez. He couldn't keep the secret. No. Not that one. So what's the next step on that? And then we'll fill it, fill out. Well, the, the full grant application is due on December 14th. So we will... Uh, Scott has a busy month. We'll be working on that here over over the next weeks to uh, put forth the best looking application we can. Um, and, I, and I will say to you, Scott, I thought you did an excellent job on the pre-app. Yes. Thank you. Um, one of the next steps on our projects is that asbestos inspection, and the fellow's coming tomorrow to do the asbestos inspection mm -hmm. on 408 Main and then also at the Moore Building. So we'll get that uh, attended to tomorrow. So will somebody a couple of it again when he does that? Or? I bet Bill don't want to. <laughs> I will. <laughs> for John. <laughs> You gotta pay the same, right? Yeah. yeah. I think you don't have to go in the basement at four weeks. <laughs> and do it during daylight hours. Yeah. Yeah, it's gotta be done during daylight. <laughs> yeah, we just gotta raise send him down there. Right? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. All right. Um, and 
my last thing then is uh, uh, Bobby Terrell. I talked to to Bob again about where he's at on his development and relayed the message to him then that uh, that the city was not going to participate financially in the lift station and he was uh, he understood that and just said that he would be looking then to downsize that lift station so it's appropriately sized to serve the 26 units That's cool. you know so he was uh, still working with his engineers on on that and then also I have the cost estimate on, on all the green infrastructure stuff out front when that was inordinately expensive too so we've asked him to do some some reworking on the design out there too with the cells yeah so you think if they reduce those cells it'll be quite a bit cheaper it's there's a couple things that they'll look at it's either not doing the storm chambers under under some of them which are really expensive or uh, most likely thing would be to have the tile, the storm tile, daylight into the ditch just south of, of Bob's property. We wouldn't run a storm sewer all the way to the outlet. So it, it would daylight into the ditch and just flow as it currently does. And are we going to get black? Black. I don't know why it's going the same way it is now. There were trees. It, have to during during heavy heavy rain well, events, it was but but uh, everything is sized to accept an inch and a quarter of rain over a 24 hour period. That's that's the spec. Of it. Northwest Iowa League, December 6th. Yep, that's uh, the next one. Is Northwest Iowa League is on December 6th. It's actually before Sac County League, but Sac County League is the 12th. So Wednesday, the 12th, in Wall Lake. In Wall Lake. And of course, everybody's invited, and then spouses usually would attend this one. Also. And the other one's at Marcus? Is it? At Marcus, yep. It'd be a good program because it's a legislative roundtable. There are quite a few legislators there. Can you ask them all the dicey questions you want? The backfill? Back I thought that was interesting. Yeah. That's all you got? That's it. Motion to adjourn. So Second. Lean adjourn. Second. Whatever. Nobody wanted to go. Dale. Yeah. You got us in a little trouble. Did you know that? Yeah, I noticed when I saw that. I don't know where I got that word at. Uh, I just thought maybe you might print something that clarifies it. I don't know where I got the word it says. Really means a lot. Is that what I used? Demolition. I know something, but, but then they.